Hyperbaric oxygen therapy is an inherently safe therapy, but because we're dealing with pressures and enriched oxygen, things could go wrong, especially if proper policies, procedures, and best practices aren't in place. The truth is it usually takes several things to occur simultaneously for an accident to occur, but when they happen, they are typically catastrophic. On the flip side, every documented hyperbaric accident that we have to talk about was completely avoidable if the right safety measures were in place. In this video, I'll break down what practitioners and patients alike should be doing to make sure to keep everybody around the chamber environment completely safe. I'm Dr. Jason Saunders, founder of HBOT USA, and I've been practicing hyperbaric medicine for nearly 20 years. I've also trained and certified over 600 practitioners and technicians inside of over 300 clinics all over the world. If you're running a clinic and your technicians aren't certified and you don't have a safety director, you are out of compliance with the rules and regulations that govern the hyperbaric industry. Having a safety director is not a choice, it is a requirement. Please make sure you have your safety director in place inside your clinic. And if you don't, get a safety director trained and certified. I will leave a link in the description below for our safety director training so that we can help get that process started for you. As I've said earlier, hyperbaric oxygen is inherently safe. In the last 100 years of use, there are only a few dozen cases of catastrophic accidents inside this industry. Inside of our training and certification courses, we spend half of a day talking about all the different hyperbaric accidents in our past. And we do that so that we can learn from what mistakes were made so that we know how to avoid those mistakes in the present and well into the future. Until this past year, the most recent hyperbaric accident was about 20 years ago. And now all of a sudden in this past year, we've had two hyperbaric accidents within months of each other. Obviously, this has led to a lot of people discussing whether or not hyperbaric is a safe therapy to be offering to the public. But even these two most recent accidents are not a deviation from what I said earlier. With proper policies, proper procedures, equipment maintenance, and utilizing best practices, these two accidents could have been avoided as well. The hyperbaric industry has grown exponentially, especially in the last three to five years. And as the industry grows and more people are utilizing hyperbaric and more patients are having hyperbaric sessions, statistically speaking, there may be an increase in the potential for accidents. And unfortunately, with all of this growth in the industry, the training and certification around safety has not kept up with the amount of clinics, the amount of new equipment, and the amount of sessions that are being conducted worldwide. In fact, it appears that many of the newer clinics that are opening aren't even aware of the proper policies, procedures, the rules and regulations that govern this industry, and yet are still actively opening businesses and starting to treat people without the proper steps being taken. The reason I have this channel and the reason that I even teach these training and certification courses is because I know how powerful and I know how effective hyperbaric is. And I want to improve the awareness and the accessibility of this great therapy so that as many people who need or want hyperbaric oxygen gain access to it, but without the proper safety measures in place. And if we continue to see an increase in these accidents, not only is that going to create fear around the safety of this equipment, more importantly, it's going to shift the landscape and change the regulatory requirements of hyperbarics, making it harder and harder to practice hyperbarics, making it more and more difficult for patients to have access to this equipment. So as dedicated as I am to teaching about hyperbaric oxygen and the benefits around that, I'm equally passionate about making sure that we're doing it in the safest way possible. No therapy worth doing that has a potential massive beneficial impact is without any risks at all, but the overwhelming majority of these risks can be mitigated by having the right policies, procedures, and following the rules and regulations that have governed this industry since the beginning of this industry. Most of the standard risks associated with hyperbaric are relatively benign. Issues with equalizing their ears, maybe some temporary vision changes. Occasionally, we have patients whose symptoms actually heighten for a little while in the earlier stages of their treatment before hyperbaric really helps to relieve or alleviate the symptoms that they were coming in for in the first place. A lot of these are incredibly minor, and with a good consent form, these issues can be discussed with a patient, and a patient could decide through an informed consent whether or not they want to participate in this hyperbaric protocol inside your hyperbaric chamber in your clinic. 
Outside of that, it's your job and your responsibility to create policies and procedures that keep those patients safe from other issues like catastrophic issues where there's a potential loss of life. Monitoring and keeping your patients for signs and symptoms of adverse reactions throughout their entire session. Monitoring your oxygen percentages inside your chamber, making sure that they're staying within the required percentages for your equipment. Instructing the patients how to manage pressure and equalize their ears. Making sure the patient is wearing the appropriate clothing. Making sure that the patients aren't bringing in any non-approved devices or equipment into your chamber that could pose serious risk. Keeping an eye on your equipment and doing the appropriate maintenance on your equipment at the appropriate time intervals and documenting that that maintenance was done. Communicating with your equipment manufacturers if you're having additional issues with your equipment so that the manufacturer can come and do an assessment and make any corrections that are necessary. Keeping an eye on the number of cycles that your chamber has done and what are the cycle limits for the equipment that you have. Knowing the age of your chamber and the lifespan of your chamber and having inspections done on your equipment at the appropriate intervals to know that your equipment is safe. This is the responsibility of every individual clinic owner on every single one of the chambers in their office. Another major and glaring issue in the industry right now is making sure that the equipment that you're running has been tested for safety. If you're running a hard chamber, that chamber is required to be ASME and PVHO approved. The American Society of Mechanical Engineers, through the division of pressure vessels for human occupancy, have an entire guideline of build two specs for hard chambers. Anybody operating a hard chamber, especially in the United States, is required to make sure that that hard chamber is PVHO approved. There is independent and third-party testing on every single device that's out there inside people's clinics to make sure that that chamber was built properly and will be safe for human use. Not only are you gambling with people's lives if you're using unapproved equipment, but God forbid something goes wrong, the entire liability of that accident will rest on your shoulders for choosing to use unapproved equipment inside your clinic. I take this so incredibly serious because taking shortcuts or buying cheaper equipment or cutting corners in any way not only puts a person's life in risk and honestly, your entire business at risk, it puts the entire industry at risk. And I've dedicated virtually my entire professional career in trying to drive this industry forward in the safest and most responsible way possible. When it comes to the accidents that we do discuss in our courses, as I said earlier, there's one common denominator, deviation from the standard of care, deviation from the policies and procedures and the rules and regulations. And there are really only two main deviations that have led to the majority of these accidents. Number one, chamber maintenance. And in some cases that was not doing something that needed to be done. And other cases, it was performing the maintenance, but not doing the maintenance properly, or bringing something into the chamber that was never supposed to be in a pressurized, oxygen-rich environment in the first place. Now, you can't prevent what you don't know. And learning the details of those accidents, building yourself a robust plan of policies and procedures, becoming familiar with the rules and regulations that already exist and already govern your clinic whether you know that or not, are the steps you need to take to create the safe environment that you really want so that you can just focus on helping patients heal. I beg you to take this as seriously as I am. Find yourself the training programs and the certification programs that you need to operate appropriately. Build the systems and policies and procedures inside your clinic that you need to run your office safely. And if you're not sure what's actually required to run a safe and compliant hyperbaric practice, we created a free checklist for you that maps out everything that you need in order to become a compliant hyperbaric practice. We'll put a link in the description below so that you can grab that checklist, evaluate your own practice, and see where you're out of compliance. So I hope you found this video helpful. Please do the right thing, and I look forward to seeing you on our next video.